Greetings. Today we're going to discuss bonding. And bonding is a very important topic to us because we're going to learn how atoms come together to form compounds. There are three types of bonding that we're going to concentrate on. Ionic bonding, covalent bonding, and metallic bonding. Ionic bonding is a metal with a nonmetal. Covalent bonding involves two nonmetals. So nonmetal, nonmetal. Metallic bonds, as the name implies, has to do with metals only. So let's review a little bit, just so you know where these compounds are going to come from. Um, metals, all of the metals would come from the left side of the periodic table, the left side of the zigzag line. On this side are all the nonmetals. So metal and nonmetal would form an ionic bond, two nonmetals would form a covalent bond, and metallic bonds are formed by metals. So, how do atoms view each other? Atoms are not like we should be. Atoms don't care about the inside, like I care about you and your, the inside of you. Atoms are very superficial. They just care about themselves and how they look to the world. They care only about the outside. So. We're going to focus on this now. Let's watch this video clip. So atoms are extremely superficial. All they care about is outward appearance. To illustrate this point, I'd like to show you some scenarios. But first, let me tell you that atoms don't care about what you look like inside. Remember, they only care about your outer appearance. They interact with each other according to the outward appearance. If you see me down the street, walking, just walking down, how would you interact with me? How would you interact with me now? I bet it would be a little different if you saw me wearing this you would interact with me differently. You might think I'm a doctor or a crazy scientist or something. How would you interact with me now? Now that you've seen how atoms view each other, we're going to focus on these electrons that are in the outermost energy levels. They're outside they're not what we call the kernel electrons, but they're the electrons that are in the perimeters of the atom. And these valence electrons are any electrons that are in the outermost energy level. So before we discuss that, we need to talk about the octet rule. The octet rule, sometimes called octet-duet rule, has to do with atoms wanting a full outer shell. They want to appear cool to the world, meaning they have a full array of valence electrons. So, for example, neon, neon is a great example. Neon has a total of 10 electrons, but in the first energy level, only two, but then in the second energy level, they have eight electrons. So, neon atoms have a full array of valence electrons. That's what they all want to achieve. They all want a. They all want to look like neon. Helium only has two. So small atoms want to achieve a configuration just like helium. Now that we've talked about the octet rule, here's the definition. Pause and write down the definition so that you know that Basically, what the, all this says is that all atoms want to achieve a noble gas configuration. 
Most of them want to have eight electrons in the outermost energy level. And how do they do this? Let's start out by looking at the valence electrons. And this is called the Lewis dot configuration. The Lewis dot basically tells us the outermost configuration of an atom. We don't care about the inside, remember? They are superficial. They only care about what's outside. So I'm going to look at the periodic table, and you should too, pull out a periodic table, and find out how many outermost electrons or how many valence electrons calcium has. So, so calcium is an alkaline earth metal. It is in the second group, therefore it has two valence electrons. Ignore this little flower here. All right, since it has two valence electrons, I'm going to put the two valence electrons right there. And notice that I'm going to start on the right-hand side, and I'm going to go counterclockwise. Many boats do it different ways. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Later on, when we start putting the, these together, it's going to be a little different every time. All right, so nitrogen, we know that nitrogen is in the nitrogen family, and it has a, a minus 3 charge that it could have, but we know that it has 5 valence electrons. Therefore, the Lewis dot for nitrogen will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So there, the Lewis dot for nitrogen is completed. Next is carbon in line, and it's the carbon family, and we know that the charge of carbon is plus or minus 4. So therefore, we know that it has 4 valence electrons, and the valence electrons are going to be such as this. So, all around. Carbon actually has many, many possibilities for bonding. That's what makes carbon such a versatile atom, and it, there are so many compounds that are made from that. Many man-made uh, substances, organic compounds, are made from carbon. And they're organic because they come from carbon. All right, and then finally, we have Se, which is in the oxygen family, and it has six valence electrons. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and we are done. Those are the Lewis dot configurations for these atoms. Now, why is this important? Why are these valence electrons important? Because when we start putting together atoms, we can start to realize how they either transfer or how they can share electrons and form those bonds. So let's take, for example, calcium and chlorine. I'm going to take chlorine over here. I'm going to write chlorine. And I'm going to write its valence electrons. And it's, uh, it has seven valence electrons. So I'm going to write the valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and oops, seven valence electrons. So calcium and chlorine could potentially bond. Calcium being a metal and chlorine being a nonmetal, they must form ionic bonds. So ionic bonds are formed by transfer. So what's going to happen, one of these electrons is going to transfer over here. And I realize I have one more calcium electron. And I realize, well, this is not going to work because now it has an octet. This one does not. So I'm going to have a second chlorine atom. And this will go here. And now it has an octet. It has an octet. This one will have nothing. So zero is equal to eight in this case. So when it loses all the electrons, that's equal to eight. It has achieved a noble gas configuration. This is actually formed by transferring the electrons to the chlorine. And if I wrote the compound, I would write Ca. I have one calcium and two chlorine atoms. And that's how come calcium and chlorine form calcium chloride. This is a plus two. You learn by crisscrossing, but now you understand why it is CaCl2. Now, I'm going to show you an example that forms by sharing. Say we have hydrogen. And hydrogen, let me do it in a different color. Say hydrogen, we're going to place hydrogen here. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. 
So it is over here. So this carbon could use eight electrons. It doesn't have them yet. And now hydrogen, which is a small atom, has two valence electrons. They're both going to be happy, which means stable atoms. That's, or stable compounds. That's what we want to achieve, stable compounds. So I'm going to place an H here, another H here, and an H here. And this forms CH4. It is a covalent bond because they're sharing of electrons. Unlike this one, which was transfer, this is sharing of electrons. It is a covalent bond, and it is methane gas. Methane gas is what you use in the lab when you do your labs using your butts and burners. All right, so in conclusion, just to remember, transferring electrons, if you transfer electrons, an ionic bond has been formed. If you're sharing electrons, a covalent bond has been formed. Later on, you're going to learn that there are a couple of types of covalent bonds, but this in a nutshell is what you need to know as far as Lewis dot and the octet rule. Have a great day. See you in class.